Oh, I love animals. I love dogs. And they love you. And what about the ticks? Do the ticks love you and the dogs they, as well? Well, ticks do love dogs. They often carry, they're there. We've heard about right, it. Right. And yeah. everybody's so concerned about Lyme disease with these ticks. So Yeah, there are numerous campaigns underway to stop Lyme disease, to get a handle on it. And also a new campaign that really focuses on animals and the potential risk they face and pose. All right. What can we do? We have Dr. Patricia DeLamora here and veterinarian uh, Natalie Marks. Nice to have you both here and Thank a special you. little pug right there who's this this is annie our rescue pug hi hi patricia hi, hi dr marks hi. let's talk about uh pets and and ticks and what we need to do what do we need to look for first of all well the the problem here is is as you can see on annie she's a short coated dog and her hair is obviously going to be very difficult um, to see the skin very easily so we need to remember that when you're looking for ticks on your dog you have to part the hairs and really look closely on the head the ears in the ears under the tail on the in feet. the ears very yes very closely and remember ticks are only the size of a poppy seed so when they brush onto a pet or a child or a human um, and start to attach and engorge they only get the size of an apple seed so they're very easy to miss Mm. So you have to be looking very closely. And you're a veterinarian, right? I am. Okay, yes. an animal doctor. And Tricia, you are an infectious disease specialist? For children, yes. Indeed. What should we know? So I think a lot of what Dr. Mark said is true also for children that you know the best way to stop yourself from getting Lyme is to not get exposed or bitten by tick in the first place. So when your kids come in from outside, checking them, again, in the ears is a very popular spot for kids as well, behind the ears, in the area covered by underwear, um, really? on the scalp. Really? Under, under the yes. underwear? Yes. And in the scalp, I see children every single summer who come in with a big engorged tick that they didn't find because there's a nice big thick head of hair under there. Oh my goodness. Uh, you know, uh, we go out to the East End. Mm -hmm. Is there a problem out there? What, what do you know about that? That area. Well, unfortunately, ticks are endemic pretty much everywhere now. And as you know, of course, the Northeast is the epicenter of where tick disease started. So I think what's most important here is the ways to prevent, especially for me, how I prevent things in my canine patients. So first of all, the daily tick checks, like we talked about, making sure you're avoiding those high-risk areas. Um, there is new products out there now. One is called Brevecto with Fluoroloner, and that's an what is that? It's an oral flea and tick product that protects your dog for up to 12 weeks. There is vaccination for Lyme disease in dogs, and you need to talk to your veterinarian if that's appropriate. And there's also annual blood screening that we do for all of our canine patients to see if they've been exposed to tick disease. Canine oh. patients, dogs. That would be mine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what else should we know about this animal right here? He looks so content so and Natalie, well behaved. Can the is. dogs carry ticks that can jump on, a, a, you know, a, a child's skin? So it doesn't. So if a tick bites and attaches to a dog, they generally stay there and feed until they either fall off and they're not going to eat again, or until they crawl off um, or until you pull it off rather but they don't jump from person to dog so okay. it's really the problem here is that there's the same exposure risk so kids and dogs go together like peanut butter and jelly so if your dog has been exposed to Lyme disease then your child may have been exposed to Lyme disease because think about who's rolling around in the grass the kid and the dog mm. what about a flea collar I heard you know, we grew up hearts whatever the flea collar does right. that work well unfortunately no because it that's, it's just protecting from fleas but there are lots of products you can talk to your veterinarian about including there is um, some collar type products, um, but you have to ma make, make sure that you're talking to them about a flea and tick preventative. Interesting, you know, my Lulu, uh, <laughs> we've been dealing with this because uh, we're going to be heading out east a lot. Right. Um, she's allergic to everything, so some of the stuff she can't have. Right. Uh, but uh, I think, what about this product that you swallow that you were talking about? Yeah, there's a new product that's an oral flea and tick uh, What's in it? Is there any... Uh, it's a brand new compound called Fluoroloner, and basically it's a, a very safe product that can be used every 12 weeks. It's very effective, has a very fast tick kill, and it'll really be proactive in keeping your dog exposed, free, free from the exposure. And there ticks. are no risks to, with that? Well, with everything, there's a small risk, right? So that's why it's really important to have a great relationship with your veterinarian and annual exams and making sure that you're picking with your veterinarian as a team the right product for your pet. How is the vet business overall? I think it's done, it seems to me, you know, like in the past 15 years, 20 years, people are bringing their dogs in and kind of repairing or treating situations that they wouldn't have treated a couple of, not too long ago, actually. Well, I'm I'm glad because That's great. I, I love what I do and I love helping families. It's and great for business and great for the dog. Well, it is, and, and that's actually part of why this campaign is so great because we're taking care of the whole family. We're taking care of the pets and we're taking care of the people. I think the dog knows we're talking about it. She I does. Know. Can I see? Put it right on the tail. Let's see yeah, here. Who do we got? She really uh, sheds, so she does. Yeah.
Ooh. But she, you know, she got brushed. But she's a rescue dog from Curly Tail Pug Rescue. Oh, so she needs a home? No, no, no she's no. mine. We adopted oh, yes. her. Yes. She's yes. mine. Oh, she's my sweet. dog. Yeah. Oh. I can tell she's more into you than me. Big <laughs> she, time. She likes everybody. Uh, there, a pug is a mix between a what and a what? It's just a pug. A pug. A pug was bred a to be a companion animal. Really? What am I thinking of? Oh, a puggle. puggle. A puggle, a puggle is a, is a beagle, and mm -hmm. one mm -hmm. of these guys. That's yes. Right. So Ooh. let's let's talk about Lyme in dogs. Is is it prevalent? I mean, are you seeing more and more of it? We are, unfortunately, and this year is going to be one of the worst tick burdens that the country has ever faced. I'm sorry, Lyme disease in dogs? It's hard enough to diagnose in humans. Right. Yeah. Well, we have a little easier because at every dog's annual exam, we do a blood test that screens for a lot of the tick diseases, including Lyme disease. So we're able to find it even in dogs that come in and their owners say, like, as an example, I practice downtown Chicago and you would think there wouldn't be a lot of ticks there and I diagnose Lyme disease pretty frequently. You live oh. in Chicago? I do. The Windy City? I do. Home of the lame pizza? <laughs> what pizza? Lame compared to New York pizza. Are, are we doing a pizza throwdown? <laughs> you, you, you're gonna, you should have some pizza. So. What's a website we should? I'm going to do a throwdown, right? What's a website we should go to? Stoplime.com for pets and people, and then Global Lime Alliance is working to really get rid of Lyme and people as well. Where yeah. are you from? I grew up in Brooklyn. All right. All our right. Kind of girl. No offense. <laughs> no, I'm right, nice to see you. And I want to give a shout out to my vet, uh, Dr. Hilchuk, who Wonderful. keeps. Yeah, she's terrific, and basically told me that Lulu needs her mind. So. Uh, <laughs> Is there a vet dentist? They, do they have vet dentists? There are, but we, yeah. we do dentistry every day. See? Mm -hmm. There's Lulu. She apparently uh, needs a good cleaning. Oh, she's adorable. Uh, I wonder if Spike had ticks and fleas when he was alive. He made it through. How uh, long did, she, did Spike live for? 14 years. I think Spike lived a very nice long Me, life. My dog? Yeah. Aww. All right, anyway, uh, thank you, pal. What's his dog's name again? Annie. Annie. All right, thank you, Dr. Natalie Marks, Dr. Patricia Delamore. We appreciate you being here. Thank Great you. advice. Thank you. All right.